everybody. As you saw outside, it's winter time. I'm in Alaska. It's early January, sub-zero temperatures, which is why I am sporting the puffy coat and Isle of Man TT stocking cap. So I'm not out riding my bike, which is a Suzuki Bandit. It's a GSF 1200S from 1997. And I will be swapping out the handlebar. I purchased a Renthal brand uh, road bar low with uh, gold coloring. Hopefully I don't regret that. I really don't want to make the bike too blingy, but I think it will accentuate some of the gold that the bandits have in the lettering, the Suzuki on the tank, and the lettering on the rear uh, fairing and, and bodywork. A lot of people go with the ultra low bar, which of course is going to be lower, you know, from here to here, and it may have less of a bend. I've, I've heard from everybody talking about less bend and it's more comfortable on your, your wrists or the uh, palm of your hand that might be kind of pressing the handlebars depending on how you ride and if you're leaning forward on your bars and whatnot. Um, now, I didn't go with the ultra low, I went with the low and show you, you that right here. So this is, this is the low. Um, you are looking at it right now as if you were looking at the front of the bike. Right here you can kind of tell somewhat of the, uh, the, the pullback. And what I found was that unlike what people were saying in some of the forums, this actually has more pullback than the stock bars, which can be changed, changed by doing a little bit of rotation, uh, something like that. But I actually was kind of looking for less pullback. Now, I'm happy with the quality of the bar. Uh, they're very light. They're going to look great. They're a little bit wider. So for control, that could be great um, for some longer cruising. Uh, this should work out just fine for me, but I was still surprised. So in this video, aside from installation, I will focus on uh, some comparison photos so that you can really see the difference between the stock Suzuki Bandit bars and these Renthal Road Low bars. Let's get to it. I wanted to run through some of the tools that you're going to need so that you're prepared before you get started. And also, um, first thing, Definitely cover your tank and make sure that it's not just something thin. I mean, it's not like you're trying to just keep something from getting splashed on it. You want to keep it from getting dented or chipped, especially since you're going to loosen up these handlebars and they could rotate or you could bump the front wheel, you know, turn the handlebar while it's rotated in a new position and something may smack your tank and dent it. So make sure it's something a little bit padded. Use a few layers like I've done here. Uh, so again, the, uh, the tools real quick, um, starting with let's say the outer ends of the bars and working our way inward. The bar ends, these are stock, uh, stock bar ends in my Suzuki Bandit. They require a screwdriver, kind of a larger screwdriver. The throttle and the uh, turn signal buttons, kill switch button, that requires a screwdriver, not too difficult. Then let's get into um, actually the mirrors themselves because I'm going to take my mirrors off. If the mirrors are off, they're not in your way as you're working on things. Also, there's less weight up, up high so when you loosen up your bar, uh, it won't rotate forward, you know, because there's a lot of torque on there, it'll rotate the bars forward, and again, that can lead to smacking the tank or something. So, um, the mirrors for me are 17 millimeters. These are an aftermarket mirror. It's a Bike Master brand. Um, yours may be different. Mine, 17 millimeters. Then we'll get into the front brake master cylinder. There's two bolts right here facing you. Those are both 8 millimeters, so they require an 8 millimeter socket or a wrench. Um, oddly, it's different on the uh, clutch master cylinder side right here and down below. These are Allen bolts and they require a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. There's also some little plugs in here so you'll need a flat screwdriver or a pocket knife. And that should bring us to the very last uh, component which is the handlebar clamp itself on top of the handlebar risers. and on the Suzuki Bandit, that is going to be a six millimeter Allen wrench that you'll need for that. Guarding the bar ends, I just want to make um, a, a comment that you don't want to pull the screw all the way out. If you do, the bar end will come off, the rubber may still be stuck in there, and then therefore you have no way to pull the, the rubber out of the bar. You're going to need that to put on, on your next bar. I'm at a point where the bar ends, they seem to be coming off because the screw is loosened up, 
But what's happening is the screw is coming out. It's not actually just relieving pressure from the inside so that the rubber that's inside the handlebar will come out. And like, again, there should be a nut on the inside of there. So don't let the screw come all the way out. If you do that, you've got no way to get that rubber out and that nut is on the inside. What I'm going to attempt is having it loose like this. You can see I can move it back and forth. That's because the screw is coming out. I will use a rubber mallet to smack the screw, kind of push it in, so it releases the pressure off that rubber that's in there. Okay, what I've concluded is that my rubber, or the rubber inside the handlebar for the bar end, it's, it's so fused inside the handlebar, why would I want to mess with that and stick that in my new handlebars, especially when I really would like new bar ends anyway. Um, these are original, the paint's all off and they're scratched up. They certainly don't look that cool, bar ends aren't that expensive, so what I will do is uh, just take the screws off completely so I can get the the uh, bar ends off of there and not even worry about it at all. Really rusted up too. I'm sort of surprised that there's enough moisture in there to get it all rusty. For the, uh, the switch controls here, Underneath, there are three screws. One of them is silver. That one you can leave in place. The other two are black, or they should be black on your bandit. And you only want to remove the two black ones. Both sides have wires. Uh, there's wires that attach to the, uh, the brake switch and there's wires that attach to the clutch, which uh, is used when starting the bike. You know, you have to have the clutch pulled in or something like that. Okay, for the throttle, um, it's hard for me to tell. There's three screws and uh, all three of them are black, but the one in the middle, you can imagine, there's no screw that runs straight through the middle of the handlebar. That doesn't make any sense. So it's uh, the one that's totally towards the front of the bike and the one towards the rear of the bike. Okay, with the throttle loosened up, you know you still have the cables that are attached. Uh, it's likely if your if your cables are adjusted well, you're not going to be able to just pull this up and get some slack and pop it out of here. Um, and also with everything attached, you can't pull it off the bar because there's just not enough slack in the cables, right? So um, for you, you know, however you can manage it, you can uh, loosen these up back the cables up to give some slack on the cable. Hopefully that's going to be enough for you. I'm going to give it a try, see what it does for me. So if you can get enough slack up in here, then you should be able to turn the throttle, pop these out. You may have to go down to the carburetors and loosen up the throttle and, and do it from there. Either way, get the cables out, get the throttle out of the way. Okay, I just loosened up the cables uh, underneath by um, screwing the adjusters in towards the throttle to loosen up the cable. And I'm hoping, I don't know if I can do this with one hand. There we go. So uh, that was the trick. And then I got to do the other cable and then slide this off the bar. And there we have it. So once this cable was off, uh, you'll be able to rotate the throttle forward and this cable that's attached on here, it'll, it'll just want to fall right out. Uh, I think it's time for this other grip. Now, um, I'm replacing my grips with heated grips, so I'm not going to worry about this. I just want to cut it off, and again, it'll be a little tricky 
one-handed. Almost got it. Not like it takes a genius to figure out how to cut a grip. I know nobody needs to see this really, but it uh, never hurts to include every little step. Lots of glue and gunk type of stuff in there. Um, yeah, that's it. Now, in your case, if you're swapping out the handlebars, you may want to have a new set of grips ready to go because you may have to cut this off. If you're going to try to do it without cutting it off, and I've done this a bunch of times, when, you're, when your grip is on there, you just slip a screwdriver up in here, spray some WD-40 up in there a little bit, and then work your screwdriver around with that WD-40 or some other solvent uh, fluid in there. If you work the screwdriver around, that should be fine, and then you might be able to just slip the grip right off. And then, of course, when you go to put it back, make sure you've got glue or, or somehow, you know, you've got a plan for getting this kind of stuck in place once it's uh, put back on the bar. Again, the uh, clutch master cylinder, that has to be removed as well. And you're going to need a, a 5 millimeter Allen wrench on that. And it should be pretty easy to undo because they're not supposed to be installed that tight to begin with. There you go. Did you see that? Just a little bit of thumb pressure, and I was able to undo it. Keep that in mind when you reinstall this. You just want it snug. There's not a ton of, of torquing being put on this, right? You're just pulling, so it's just holding the clutch in place. Don't over-tighten this. What will happen is you'll, you'll snap this. It's aluminum. It'll just crack right through here if you over-tighten it. Just make it nice and snug, and then leave it be. When you get that uh, clamp off, then you can remove remove the front master cylinder and I'm showing this because you'll notice there's a little spacer here to make it fit the bars yeah super high quality craftsmanship on these bikes here anyway hopefully it'll just slide off for you I have to get some of this gunk out of the way also see that right there that's a little nub of plastic that's actually in the switch housing so that when they mount the switches um, it goes in a particular position on the bar the only problem is, is that when that's there and it's attached to the housing, if you rotate your bar, it rotates the switches, so you can't really adjust things. So a lot of people, possibly even accidentally, they'll end up breaking that little nub so that the, the uh, switch control housing can be moved around. Um, and the Renthal bars do not have this hole, so you, you will have to break that little nub off or clip it off anyway, no matter what. Okay, now for front brake master cylinder. And the same goes for these. They're not supposed to be too tight. So they should come off pretty easy. And when you put them back, also do not over tighten them. And you'll see another hole here for the, uh, the throttle uh, housing, which of course on the other bars, there is no hole in the other in, in your new bars. There will probably not be a hole. That was really quick. I mean, I, I'm taking a bunch of time shooting video, and even with the video, I mean, that's just this is all going by really, really quickly. Uh, so it's an easy job for anybody to tackle. What I'll do now is uh, get the new bar out and compare it to this stock bar. I took the cover, uh, the cloth off the tank, just so you can get a better idea how things look and what's going on here. And I just want to place the bar here up against the clamp, try to keep it flush. And you'll notice that the these angles on the Renthal, uh, these bends right here in the middle, they're out further. Okay, so that's one difference. The height of the bar at the bend is about the same. What I'm surprised about is that the bar actually seems to come up higher. I don't know if you can tell. It seems to go up a little bit higher in the stock. And of course, they're, they're longer. So you may get some better control. But I actually thought that the bar was going to be a, a little bit lower. And not have so much pullback. So you can see that too. That it's... 
it's really close to what the stock bar is, and it almost seems to have a little more of a pullback. I think I'm using the right term there, the drawback of the pullback. Um, so that's from this bend right here, the end comes back towards you. I know I've driven it home pretty hard, but I'll demonstrate why you want things out of the way off the handlebar before you do this. And why you want to have your tank covered. But to be honest, you'd, you'd have to have everything off the handlebars really in order for the handlebar to uh, rotate and drop. See that right there? That's exactly, you know, if you, if you had something on there or your wheel was turned. In fact, if the wheel was turned, just this part of the bar down here could have hit the tank. As you can see, I've got the new bar mounted in place. Um, should be self-explanatory how to do that, so I did not want to bore everybody uh, with recording it. I did want to point out, though, in case you haven't ever been able to see in other videos or instructions, the, the markings on the bar, they help you line it up nice and center, so that's a piece of cake. They really do help a lot. I've got a shadow on mine, so it looks a little off, but it's, it's uh, dead center. Also, you need to be aware of this gap right here when you put the top piece on this clamp. Um, put it on, get a bolt in there, cinch it down just barely snug, do the other side, snug it down, and go back and forth until you've got it all tight, but you've got an even gap. Same goes for the other side. Overall, the bar looks really good. You can tell there's a noticeable increase in the width of the bar. And when I sat on the bike uh, to, to get my hands on it and get it in a position before I clamped it down, I, you know, I got, I got it in what seemed like a comfortable position. Um, when I was holding on to it, I could tell a noticeable difference in the amount of leverage I would have just picking the bike up straight, you know, let alone turning. So um, that ought to feel pretty nice in the future. We'll find out later about vibration or the exact angle and position. Obviously, I got to ride in the spring and see if if I want to rotate the bar down or up a little bit to change the uh, the angle that I'll have in the bend of my wrist. Um, bar looks really great. You know, get the controls on. And sadly, it's such a nice, shiny, fancy looking bar and it really makes all these scratches and junk like that stand out. So um, that's from a previous owner. In the near future, I'll have to polish those sorts of blemishes up and change these clamps out to something a little bit nicer. Um, the quality of these is, is sort of shabby. Moving right along, I'm going to get the front clutch master cylinder mounted. Now, if you recall, there was a spacer that was in there. Now, the spacer may not slide onto the handlebar perfectly easily. If that's the case, all you got to do is get a screwdriver in here, give a little tweak, Pry that open just a tiny bit, and then it should slip right on. And choosing a position, also by the way I want to mention, uh, I'm not sure if this is that big of a deal, but I'm going to make sure that this slot right here is facing downward. You don't want it upward, it'll gather water, you know, and then that piece will start rusting or something like that, so get that slot pointed down. And then in uh, picking a position to start with, I, I just want to make sure that if I was to pull the lever, I want generally the end of the clutch lever to be at the end of the bar. And that's going to be my starting point, but I'll make better adjustments later on, especially in the spring when I actually get to get out and finally ride and test things. As I mentioned earlier, just snug these down. In fact, hardly even do that if you know you'll be making some adjustments later. You're not going to want to make this very tight at all. And I would say generally just don't even worry about the position that much. 
get it in place. You can move it around later. And same as with the uh, handlebar clamps, that gap in the clamp, you know, you want it even. So this has a gap as well, the top and bottom. And you'll want to try to get those a little bit even. But I'm not going too tight. So like I said, I'm just trying to hold it in place. So there's that. We're all set. Next, I'll get the choke and the turn signal switch in place. And the only thing you really got to pay much attention to is, is the cable in this choke lever in, in the proper location? And if it is, then the, the choke lever will sit down in that housing perfectly situated so that then you can get this all around the bar and then get it clamped down. And by the way, if your uh, turn signal switches are not working so great, before you put this on, it's a perfect time to clean it up. When you are picking a location for this, uh, although it, it's going to make a difference when I get a grip on here, I may have to slide everything further down. Um, but generally speaking, when you pick the location for this and get it tightened down, make sure that your choke lever is not rubbing against this perch for the uh, clutch master cylinder. Um, just make sure there's a little bit of a gap in there. It doesn't have to be much. And then get this tightened down. When you're tightening your screws, do not over tighten them. Uh, they just need to be kind of like wrist tight, you know, feel some good good tension on your, on your wrist and then you're done. It's the short screw in the front, the long screw in the back underneath. If I can get focus here. Uh, yeah, there's the long screw. And don't forget about this little clasp, this little metal hoop here. The screw goes through that. Now, when you take that screw out, this loop will often just fall down. It'll be hanging here. You may not notice it. You'll completely forget about it and put that screw in and think you're done. Uh, but without that, it, your, your choke cable doesn't really stay fastened up in place very well. Um, and the only other thing is to make sure that you get your wires connected back when you're finished. Again, just get these screws nice and snug and firm. Don't over tighten them. And by the way, these screws are not the same as the throttle housing on the other side. These screws are shorter. So as you're putting these screws in, if, uh, if the screw starts to feel like it's getting tight, but you still have a gap in here, take a look at the top of your housing. See if you're about to punch a hole right through the housing. They're not the same length of screws. So uh, I suggest when you take things apart and set it aside, just set them in a location where they won't get confused. I've discovered that with the Renthal bars, even when you get this nice and tight, it's still loose. It's like impossible to get it so tight that it doesn't want to rotate. That's a big deal because, see that? The choke lever itself wants to make it move around. But for now, since I still have to get the grip on and position everything, I'll just leave it alone. Something for everybody else to watch out for. I'm starting on the brake master cylinder. Uh, take the opportunity to get this cleaned out here and the same with the, uh, I guess, the clamp side. And you might want to inspect this. I actually thought that, that mine had a bit of a crack in it, but it doesn't. There is a mark, but it's not cracked. Um, and similar to when working on the clutch, you know, just get it positioned generally so that if you were pulling the lever, the lever would come to the, the end of the bar. And it'll be the long bolt in the top and the shorter bolt in the bottom. mounting this even more loose than I did the clutch side because you've got throttle to go on and my grip and everything so that one more than likely will change. I wanted to point out that you should really take the opportunity to clean out your throttle. If there's any grime or gunk in there, get it cleaned out so it's not grinding on your new 
handlebar. There really should not be any grease or gunk in there. It should be a nice dry surface that will slide really easily. Okay. And then when you bring up the housing, make sure that the top, bring that up first, get it slipped around, kind of keep it up out of the way a little bit. You'll need a little bit of room, but just keep it up there, otherwise you'll end up pinching your wire, or you'll, you'll get the throttle in place with the cables and realize that the, the top is hanging over here on the wrong side or something. Slide your throttle on with the, uh, the top portion that catches the cables towards the bottom. And you may be able to do this nice and easy. I'm going to get the first cable slipped into its position. I'm working on the cable on this side towards the front of the bike. You can't tell in the video so much, but I have that cable slipped into its notch. Then as I rotate, it's lifting up on that cable, so it's pulling the whole thing together. Okay, so I just rotate it up. see there and then this cable if you rotate the throttle enough you should be able to get some slack keep rotating a little bit slip it over and then you can let go and, and both the cables are in it's not going anywhere then you can get this piece down on the top and get your screws in again should be short screw in the front and long screw in the back I started to tighten things down and uh, I was finding I was having a big gap in the front here. And I already mentioned earlier about the nub. Uh, it's right up in the, t in the top here, this, the, the top of the housing. There's a, a plastic nub that's there, but there's no hole in this handlebar for it to fit into, so you have to clip that out. I thought that mine was already clipped out uh, from working on things previously, so I'll do that first and then I'll be able to screw it together. So that, that nub that's in the top, I've got it clipped out now, you should be able to tell. And uh, I have to say it would it'd be easiest to do with a pair of uh, wire snips and just kind of snip it out and then you could take a, a knife or something like that and kind of shave it a little bit more. Um, I couldn't locate my snips so I was using a, a carpenter's knife to kind of shave away a little bit at a time and, and finally got it, it wasn't too bad. And I'm willing to bet that now I can just put this right in place before I tighten anything and I can tell that I'm not going to have any problem. So if you are not able to put the housing together before the screws without a gap, then you know you've got something pinched, whether it's a wire or you've got that nub in there. Um, so take, take a look. Once you have the throttle housing back in place, you'll want to uh, see how much play you have in the throttle and uh, assuming you had to um, you know, let out a bunch of slack in the cable just to get the throttle out and disconnected. So you'll want to adjust these back a little bit. You'll probably put them right back to where they were before. So mine was out just a tiny bit. And then I'm able to have a little bit of slack before it starts to pull the throttle. Pretty good. That's it. And then you have some, some wires there. Make sure they get connected back. That's for the brake light. And of course, once you connect them, you can turn your key on and give it a test. It's now the day after I did my handlebar work. I had to cut things short last night so that I wouldn't miss uh, Sherlock Holmes. So um, forgive me. Uh, what I wanted to do right now was a quick follow-up on insulation, quality of the bar, whatnot, and uh, just kind of give a little conclusion. So um, overall, I'm really happy with the quality of the bars, and they look good. Uh, I had concerns about the gold coloring. Um, I'm interested to know if this kind of fades over time. I'm not sure yet. In pictures that I've seen online, this gold does not look quite so pronounced. 
So uh, if it does fade, that would be great because it will actually tie in with the Suzuki emblem a little bit better. Um, so anyway, happy with the quality. As for the job itself, it took about 30 minutes. Now that's, that's if I hadn't been shooting video. It's like a 30 minute job, really easy to do, anybody can tackle it. Um, you don't need that many tools, it's just really straightforward. Hopefully the video will help you out a little bit if you need help. Uh, a couple issues that I did run into. Uh, the biggest one being, and this affects me, not everybody, just a small a handful of people. If you have the bar back risers, especially if they're a, a tall and, and I guess distant bar back, um, that combined with the length of the handlebars will give you a situation where your throttle, your throttle will not reach the end of the bar. Now, I have dealt with this momentarily by unclipping the throttle cable. Uh, if you look down lower, and I'm not sure if you can see this in the video, but where the throttle cables come through, right before they go into the frame of the bike, there's a little clip there, like a, a little metal wire clip. I just pulled them out of that clip. That gave the throttle cable enough slack so that I could pull the throttle to the end of the bar. Now, that's not a great fix because uh, in the springtime when I go to ride, I'll find that when I turn, it's still putting too much pressure on that cable and I'll be able to feel it in the throttle. So my solution will be to get better risers that are a little smaller but nicer anyway because I really don't like these. I'm going to get some smaller risers and everything will be absolutely fine. I almost was going to put the bar on the original, uh, the base of the risers themselves. I can't do that because I lowered my front end because I'm kind of short. So my fork tubes stick up in the air. There's that concern. And also, and I shot some video of this earlier. I, I don't know if I'll edit it into the final cut or not, but this uh, wiring housing spins on the Renthal handlebars. And I'm really surprised. I did not see anything mentioned about that in uh, other videos online. So um, this will really be noticeable when you pull your choke. It'll rotate this whole housing. I'm not sure if you can see that, but this whole thing is sliding around. Uh, I think. My fix for that will probably be a piece or two of electrical tape underneath the housing. Something that will kind of stick and grip a little bit better. That should take care of it. So uh, anyway, um, at this point, I am ready to work on my heated grips, which I'm more excited about than the handlebars themselves. And hopefully uh, everything that I've shown here and some little tips and things I've mentioned that will help, help everybody else out. So thanks for watching, and hey, enjoy your ride.